Shots fired at the ICE facility down in San Antonio. Apparently, uh, according to local reports, uh, local media, and there you can see the bullet hole right there uh, in the window. It's up a couple of floors. It happened 3 a.m. Tuesday. We understand there were no injuries. The FBI is investigating. But this is uh, a, a, another attack on an ICE facility. I believe it's the fourth. Mm -hmm. In the last month, no, you're right. I mean, country. last month, protesters blocked the entrance to an ICE national headquarters in D.C. In mid-July, in Tacoma, Washington, a man hurled a Molotov cocktail at an ICE building. And July 12th, in Aurora, Colorado, we remember when the U.S. flag was taken down and the Mexican flag was put up and a Blue Lives Matter yep. flag dis uh, defaced. Mm -hmm. So this is, it appears to be an anti-ICE pattern. Let's bring in Kevin McAleenan. He's the acting DHS secretary. Good morning to you, Kevin. Good morning. Good to be with you. Good morning. Good to have you on. So um, the ICE agents down in San Antonio were saying this was not random. It was it was very targeted because that building that houses different offices, the bullet went through the ICE window, which looked like it was about five or six floors up. What do you think? What's your reaction? Yeah, it, it does appear to be targeted. And again, as you just noted, this is the fourth incident uh, of violence or, or an issue at an ICE facility. And our top priority is the safety of our men and women who are out there protecting American communities. Uh, really appreciate the quick response of the FBI. Uh, the state and locals are going to be investigating this. But we've got we to gotta find this perpetrator. and We've got to uh, ensure that this can't happen again. Absolutely. Uh, the ICE field office uh, director down there, Daniel Bible, Mr. McAleen, had said he blamed politicians media outlets and activist groups for recklessly sharing information and misinformation to the public. What do you think about that assessment? I think the environment where we're demonizing law enforcement for doing their jobs, for enforcing the law in the books, is concerning. It can be dangerous and it can result in people taking actions that, that are not supported by the facts, that, that are not uh, in response to anything inappropriate that our men and women of ICE and enforcement removal operations are doing. Uh, and I think we've got to tone that down, absolutely. Well, ICE certainly has been demonized. Uh, we've seen that a lot in the last year, really. But these guys, uh, the, the men and women of ICE, are simply doing their job. If, if people don't like the laws, let's change the laws. That, that's exactly right. Uh, we, we have to have a balanced enforcement process uh, to have integrity in the immigration system. We can't do everything at the border, even though we're making progress with our international strategy, thanks to President Trump's engagement with Mexico, with Guatemala, and now the new president, El Salvador. Uh, even though we're making progress, we still have to enforce the law mm -hmm. in the interior. We can't have businesses uh, that are exploiting undocumented workers in an anti-competitive fashion. We've got to have balance. Mr. Secretary, Steve just mentioned the fact that Congress has done almost nothing to address the crisis at the border. The president no, has declared... They've talked a lot about they've, it. They've talked a great deal about it. The president has declared an emergency, tried to tap into other funds, put pressure through tariff pressure onto Mexico with the deployment of National Guard troops and their own southern border. We've also heard about these safe third country agreements that have been signed or are in the works with a number of different countries. You just mentioned Guatemala. While the new president-elect there wants to rewrite the migration deal that we believed was struck with the Trump administration. Uh, what's happening there? Sure. Let, let's break that down, Pete. Uh, several different components to that. I announced on Thursday last week down in Yuma that we are making progress with our strategy. Uh, the international peace, first and foremost, uh, Mexico stepping up to do more enforcement on their southern border between Chiapas and Guatemala, the transportation routes and the human smugglers bringing migrants to the border. Uh, they are making progress there, and we have seen a reduction in flows. Uh, with Guatemala, we've also implemented, again, there's five more months to this administration in Guatemala. We've implemented an aggressive uh, effort against human smugglers within Guatemala, operational partnership with DHS boots on the ground, side by side with Guatemalan partners, uh, and also, as you noted, signed an asylum cooperation agreement, which could really change the game and to make sure that we're protecting people that need asylum as close to home as possible, but also denying that access to really exploit the loopholes in our law at the same time. Uh, so those efforts are, are making progress. 43% reduction in crossing since May. Uh, we're hoping to continue that progress in August. I'll be going back to Central America next week uh, to tr try to build on that with El Salvador and Panama and really address uh, th this problem as a regional effort. Right. Mr. Secretary, when I watch you on the Sunday shows and you get raked over the coals, when I watch you in front of Congress and they just want sound bites and we've got leaders that just blast you, I ask myself every single time, is it worth it to you? Why do you do right. this job? 
That's a great question, Ainsley. I mean, the, the mission is compelling. I think we have the most compelling mission in law enforcement uh, to protect the homeland. Uh, and, and it's an honor to serve in this role. Uh, but the second thing that inspires me is our men and women. Uh, being down there on, on the border multiple times as acting secretary, seeing how hard they're working, seeing that we've gotten them some relief. Uh, the emergency supplemental combined with our international strategy has changed that dynamic. Uh, on the first week of June, we had 20,000 people in custody in border stations. They were having a very difficult time managing that overcrowding. This morning, we had less than 4,000. Uh, mm -hmm. And they're not staying with us very long. We're, we're able to repatriate the single adults quickly. Uh, the unaccompanied children are going to a better situation with Health and Human Services. So seeing that progress, that, that's inspiring to me. And I'll take the hits on behalf of the men and women because they deserve our support and protection. Indeed. Uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, there's been a lot of talk of domestic terrorism over the last couple of weeks in particular. How is the Department of Homeland Security uh, addressing this real concern? Uh, absolutely. It's been one of our, my top priorities since becoming acting secretary in April. I uh, stood up a targeted violence and terrorist prevention office in my first week. Uh, we commissioned the Homeland Security Advisory Council to help us study domestic terrorism, and especially white supremacist extremism and racially motivated violence. I was in Jackson, Mississippi yesterday uh, with our Homeland Security Advisory Council, meeting with uh, members of Congress, state and local leaders uh, on uh, attacks on faith-based organizations and churches. Uh, how can we address uh, those better? as a whole of community. Uh, for DHS, this is a major effort. We have multiple operational components, our cybersecurity and infrastructure security agency, the U.S. Secret Service, mm -hmm. FEMA, the Federal Protective Service. All of those entities help empower state and local communities uh, to be prepared to do active shooter awareness trainings. Uh, the grants that we supply support law enforcement in addressing these kind of concerns. And of course, we're a close partner with the Federal Bureau of Investigation uh, with their lead on investigating and preventing domestic terrorism. So it's a major effort for DHS. We're expanding it right now, uh, and we're going to in increasingly become more effective because it's a, it's a real issue, as you yeah. see, uh, all well, over the country. It is a real issue, but are, are you seeing a rise in the number of incidents, or is this something that, uh, you know, you've experienced in the past, but it's just being reported differently now? I think there, there is a rise in the number of incidents. The, the FBI director testified last month about 850 domestic terrorism investigations ongoing, a number of those with racially motivated, violent extremist ideologies behind them. Uh, and we've got to get out in front of that, uh, bo both in the prevention side and identifying individuals that are on a pathway to violence uh, through the Secret Service National Threat Assessment Center. We've told uh, state and local communities, mental health providers, school resource officers, those indicators they need to look for to be able to identify someone who's on a path to violence and interdict and get an off ramp uh, so that they don't become uh, violent and, and mount an attack. That's what we have to do. Uh, so that there is a concern that there's an increasing uh, environment of violence uh, in a targeted sense. Kevin McAleen, an acting DHS secretary, thank you very much for your time. Thank this you. We appreciate it. Thanks, all three of you. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you, too.